Hi again students, welcome back. Let's find out how we can write an informal letter. Writing a letter is a directed writing question and you can find this question in section A of your paper 1. Before that, look at the two types of letters. I am very sure you have been taught the two types of letters in your school. They are the formal letter and informal letter. Now, these two letters are different because we send these letters out to different type of people and the purpose is different too. What is a formal letter? When you send out a formal letter, you send it out to ask for permission, requesting for information, or to complain about something, and sometimes to apply for a job. When we send out a formal letter, we send to authorities. Now, authorities are people with positions like your school principal, your teacher advisor, the manager of a company, editor of a newspaper company. Now, these are all authorities. An informal letter is written with different purposes. When you want to share experiences like when you go on a camping trip or share information gained at a seminar with a friend. Sometimes you want to respond to a letter which you have received before or ask for opinion or seek advice. You will send an informal letter. Now today, we are going to help Fiona write a letter to her sister Bella. This is Bella. She is a college student. She is in distress because she has to decide either to buy a mobile phone or a laptop. She cannot make up her mind, so she has written to her sibling to seek advice. When you read the question, a few things like informal letter and the name of the sister Bella should be written on your question paper before it slips your mind. Before we start writing the letter, I want you to remember a few things. The first one, the task. The type of language we use in the letter. Now, what type of language do you use? Secondly, I want you to think about the format. When you get your question paper, remember this. It is important to examine the task at hand. Study the question carefully. Identify the key points in the question and choose the right format. The next aspect is the language. An informal letter uses a casual tone. So, when someone reads it, it sounds friendly. However, this does not mean you can use slang words. I have no doubt that it is very common for Muslims to greet one another by greeting each other in Arabic, such as Assalamu Alaikum or Salam. Now, these will be regarded as errors because these words are not English words. Now, so bear in mind, next time, don't use them, okay? So, our question today will involve the comparison between two devices. You are expected to use comparative adjectives in your sentences when you talk about the features. I will explain more in my lesson. And the final point is the choice of words. The choice of words you use will merit you marks for language. After all, we are assessing you on your language ability. So, choose words that can impress your examiner. 
Boys and girls, this is the format that you should be thinking of. Look at the screen. Number one, the sender's address. Number two, date. Number three, salutation. And number four, sender's signature. Here we have the question. Let's take a minute to read the question. You receive a letter from your younger sister who is studying in a college. Your sister is sad because she cannot decide whether to purchase a mobile phone or a laptop. She has also attached two pamphlets which she took from the IT shop that sells these devices near her college. Write a letter to your sister to advise her and to help her make the best choice. Underline the important words in the question. I have done this for you. Remember to use all the points given and add two more advantages of your own. When writing your letter, you must lay out your letter correctly Use all the notes given. Give your own ideas when needed. You will receive up to 15 marks for the format and content points. And up to 20 marks for the quality of your writing. Let's look at the question again. You are supposed to be able to identify all the underlined phrases and words because they make up the task in this question. I've mentioned this before. Don't forget, you only have 45 minutes to spend here. And your total marks is 35. Read the information closely. These are your content points. You have information on the mobile phone the laptop and another section at the bottom that states you have to add two advantages on your own. Now, what comes to your mind when you see the instruction? You should be thinking about It's an informal letter the tone you use when writing to a younger sibling Giving advice Do you know where to place them in your letter? I will give you some time to think Check your answers against the screen to see if you manage to get the answers right. Are you all set? Let's proceed. Here is a sample to show you the location of the items listed earlier. You write your address on the top right hand corner of your paper. Immediately after that, is the date in which you should write in that way. Skip one line before you start your salutation. Here in the sample, the salutation is My dear Bella. Following that, skip another line and you can start your first paragraph. The introduction. In the introduction, you can ask your sister how she has been keeping and tell her that you are going to respond to her request. Try to make your introduction short and sweet. The writer's address typically contains the house number, residential area like the name of an apartment, where you say a condo or a, lot, a land plot number. Okay, then you have the postcode and area, and of course, you have the name of the state. 
Look at the way the date is written. You must write the name of the month. And don't forget the year. Next, we are going to look at six steps in letter writing. What are they? First, read the question. Identify who is your recipient. Number two, write your address, date and salutation. Number three, write a brief introduction and the body of the letter. Cover all the points. Number four, join the ideas using sentence connectors. Number five, add your own suggestions as stated in the question. And finally, step six, signature. Okay, let's take it slow. Let's look at the first three steps. When reading the question, here are the things you need to quickly jot down. Remember, time flies really quickly in the exam room. Think of a name. Write two advantages that you would use later. Write some of the connectors that you plan to use. Always remember, what is the purpose of your letter? And think of the language used to compare items. So we are looking at comparative and superlative adjectives. Here is how you begin your letter. Don't spend too much time creating an address or choosing a name for your sister. For instance, My dear sister Bella, that's simple right? How have you been? I do hope that this letter finds you in great health. Your letter arrived yesterday. I totally understand your grief and have done some research on the two devices for you to choose from. By the way, before I forget, Toby, your cat misses you too. Mum and Dad and Brother Reza talk about you every day. Everyone hopes to see you soon when you are on your semester break. Typically, there are 12 identified content points in this question. So during the exam, you can underline and write C1 to C12 on top of them and underline them in the question paper so that you do not miss them. Now, this is a very useful tip. They carry about 12 marks as you can see here in this table. Just as a reminder, boys and girls, Avoid stringing your points in one sentence. So what should you do? Try writing the points in separate sentences. In this question, you are required to compare two electrical devices. The language expected from you will be the comparative adjectives. Here is a practice that I would like you to do. There are four adjectives that you would use later and one has been done for you. I will give you some time. Okay, are you ready? Now, we shall check our answers. We can use these forms to compare the laptop and the mobile phone. Usually, we can add ER to the adjective followed by the word. Then, to compare two items like bigger than. Now, that is the grammatical rule. Okay, so if you have the word big, you want to compare two items, you use bigger than. 
when you have more than three items and you want to choose the best you add the in front of the adjective and then the word adjective plus est so if we are using the word big so now for superlative it will become the biggest now some words are special they take on a different form altogether like the word good now when you compare two items you cannot use gooder that is wrong okay because good is a unique word so words like good or bad all right they have exceptions to the rule so when you want to use the word good you have to remember after good comparative will become better than and then superlative form it will become the best for the word bad comparative worse than superlative form the worst you must check the spelling as well now here are some additional information there are some adjectives like beautiful which cannot be changed to beautiful or beautifulest now because these words do not exist if you write it this way it will be marked as an error okay so you can use the word more in front of the adjective followed by the word then so for the word beautiful you can say she is more beautiful than the rose in its superlative form the sentence using the word beautiful can be written as she is the most beautiful girl in town we have come to the last three stages in our lesson here are steps four five and six when you join several sentences they will produce a paragraph now what is a good paragraph a good paragraph has a good flow it means that when a reader reads your paragraph he or she can follow your ideas with ease and there is a link between one sentence to another i am very sure your teacher would have taught you some connectors by now here are a few that we can use in our letter later when you want to add on to your information you can use besides on top of that and furthermore if your idea is different you can use on the contrary or however if you wish to say that the idea is similar you can use similarly or somewhere in between your words in that sentence you can add the word also all right so next we will look at how the content points are written using these connectors and comparative adjectives this is paragraph 2 the pamphlets which you sent in your letter are extremely helpful and i think both are great options however there are certain considerations that you have to make before you decide to make your purchase the mobile phone is sonic 9 brand and the laptop is also from the same manufacturer sonic laptop similarly both devices have the same brand name and i guess you must like this brand a lot now however the prices differ from each other one is pricier than the other the laptop is more expensive than the mobile phone if you buy the mobile phone you have to pay 1300 ringgit whereas the laptop will cost you 1499 ringgit Although both items are costly, I think you must consider other reasons too before making a decision. First of all, 
you travel a lot using public transportation and you have to do a lot of assignments within a very short time. So, the item you choose should make your life as a college student a breeze. Can you spot the connectors and adjectives? I hope you can. The following content points are for C5 to C10. Now, let's look at paragraph 3. Are you ready? Okay. You wrote to me before that you commute every day to college by taking the feeder bus. Hence, you cannot carry something very heavy in your backpack. You are also exposed to the hot sun and heavy rain. Therefore, it is important that you keep your electrical device dry and protected. In terms of weight, the mobile phone is only 300 gram, but the laptop weighs around 1.3 kilogram. This means that the mobile phone is lighter for you to carry than the laptop. Nevertheless, Sonic laptop can store a lot more data than a mobile phone. And as a college student, I bet you have many assignments to do and if you have your own laptop, you can continue to do your work from your dormitory. The mobile phone only has 180GB but the laptop has 360GB data storage. You do not have to share computers with other students in college and leave college very late at night. I also heard that you can still contact family using video calls using a laptop. This is great! Both the laptop and the mobile phone has similar warranty of one year. Now, I understand why this is a difficult decision to make. I would strongly advise you to buy the laptop since it can also make calls like a mobile phone. Are you all still okay? Right, not much more to go. Finally, we have come to C11 and C12. Finally, I would recommend a laptop than a mobile phone because you can have a group discussion anywhere and type your assignment on the spot. A mobile phone is restricted to making phone calls and video calls. The screen of a laptop is also a lot bigger than the screen of a mobile phone. This makes it more convenient for you to read from online journals or sending mails to your lecturers and friends. Although a laptop is more expensive than a mobile phone, the difference in price is very little compared to benefits of having your own laptop. Not forgetting, a laptop has longer battery life than a mobile phone. Do get the laptop before the offer period is over. I think it is an excellent bargain. And now, this is the last paragraph. Remember, let's keep it short and simple. I do have a few reminders for you before you go to the shop. Do not carry so much cash in your purse. It is dangerous and you might get pickpocketed. If possible, opt for cashless purchase. Keep your warranty card and check that the laptop is in good condition before you bring it back with you. I pray that you are no longer sad now that you have read my views and advice about the two items. 
Send me an email soon and take a picture of the laptop after you have purchased it. Take care Fiona. Keep writing and stay safe. We miss you lots. Your sister, Fiona. At the bottom of the letter is the signature of the person who writes the letter. Choose an appropriate signatory based on the relationship of the writer and the recipient. I have listed some that you should use for this letter. You cannot use yours sincerely because this is not a letter to a friend. Yours sister is incorrect because there is an error in the word yours. It should have been written as your sister and finally yours faithfully is meant for a formal letter. Okay, so just remember you must identify the relationship. Okay, your sincerely is not meant for family members. Right. After you have written your sister or your brother or your loving sister, you can sign your letter. Alright then, boys and girls. Very quickly, this is the layout of your informal letter. Remember to leave one line gap after your day, salutation and each paragraph. It will make your letter neater and more presentable. Before we end, these are the items that we have talked about earlier. I hope you have found this lesson helpful. Good luck to all of you out there. Keep practicing, don't give up and remember, everyone can write.